Hey, what's going on? This is Chris Sparks from Brightlands Hive, and I'm sitting here with Dean Maisley, a fellow Delawarean, uh, two Ooh. Americans in the Netherlands. Uh, and Dean and I are going to talk today about uh, what it's like to be a patriot living in the Netherlands. Woo! So, Dean, um, can you do a quick introduction about yeah, sure. what it is you do? So, hey guys, I'm Dean Maisley. So, I'm working on a project here called Nest Egg. And basically, the premise is that we're trying to create a platform for people to build their own basic income. The way we're doing this is that we want people to basically invest in the infrastructure of their city so they can own all the production. So imagine owning solar panels, windmills, self-driving cars, delivery drones, all through an online dashboard that you can click to have it when you need to. So like, you can basically get the kilowatt hours from your solar panels and reduce your cost of living with your energy bill and so forth. So zero marginal cost stuff. Yeah, zero marginal cost society. Cool. So Sweet, so let's, let's reverse a little bit. So when you're not running around like Neruto through the Netherlands, through the train stations, <laughs> What, um, what is it like to be an American living um, you know, in, in a foreign country? Um, what are things that people from home don't expect you to tell them about what life is like here? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, just from a superficial level, I would say living here, uh, the infrastructure here is amazing. So being able to take trains to different community events is huge because yeah. if there's an event over in the city an hour away, I never have this predisposition that I can't attend yeah. because I can just take a train every 10 minutes to get to where I need to go. Yeah. And so it's really exciting to be able to go to all these different opportunities and meet cool people that otherwise would have been really prohibitive. Yeah, for me, it's also like a, a very inexpensive, highly effective national subway system where if you got lost, one, you don't have to ever have to worry about being unsafe, which yeah. is the crazy, one of the craziest things oh, that's that, huge. that I learned about the Netherlands. Like, they do not have the issue of, let's say, uh, like the, the great unwashed as we have in the U.S. <laughs> Everyone seems to be taken care of in a very holistic way. 84% yeah. um, of Dutch people, or 89% of Dutch people speak English, whereas in the U.S. we have a 93% English profic proficiency rate. <laughs> But yeah, the, like the, the infrastructure is, is amazing. Communication is amazing. Um, the uh, the work-life balance, too. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty funny because in American, you think of Europe as these lazy, slow people. But in actuality, <laughs> they get a ton of work done in their 9 to 5, and then they just relax and have a good time afterwards. Yeah. And the next day, they come super refreshed. And that yeah. atmosphere, it makes for a really easy and fun environment to work in. When I got interviewed for this particular job, they said, what is it about, what's the thing that you, uh, you know, it detracts from your professional uh, effectiveness and I said well you know I'm, I'm a white American male and that means that I tend to work harder but not smarter <laughs> and I was very I emphasized the not smarter part of yeah. things um, and it's like yeah and they were like and I said don't discriminate against me <laughs> I can't help it I didn't invent this chemistry right you got that that hustle hard thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. hustle fire. hustle hard but like the the chivalry is mis like if you're not miserable <laughs> you're not chivalrous here it's really set up so that you can have a very healthy work-life balance um, and and get a lot more out of the hours that you are working. And I really notice that with the people that work here. And I will say one thing, being an American in the Netherlands is really nice because of the cultural differences. Because yeah. even though it is really nice to relax and everything, it is cool because you're the American that comes in there and you bring in somewhat of the outside thinking ideas and yeah. a little bit more of a hustle and energy that you don't really get, so you get to like peacock a little bit. That's for <laughs> sure, like the hustle thing is also something that we import really well into mm -hmm. this context. Um, I think that like people want to talk to me because I'm hyper and uh, energetic and outgoing, and it's like, oh, that guy. There's something going on yeah. over there with that guy. <laughs> and like I just curious. Throw a spice to him. <laughs> He's spicy. Yeah. And and then like, it's it's always like a talking piece. Like, how did you end up here? That's always a good conversation starter. Whereas mm -hmm. in the U.S., you're part of this like mass monolith. But um, yeah, the hustle is another really cool thing. Um, uh, I, I think also just doing business here in general, I love being in such a context with such open people mm -hmm. that are really easy to provide uh, or to interview, but also provide like an unbiased um, uh, response, for example, for a customer interview. And that also brings up a good point in terms of building relationships with like the government entities, because as an American, you think of bureaucracy and governments as being totally incompetent. They can't yeah. do anything right. Free market always wins. Yeah. What's really interesting in a small country like the Netherlands is that since it's such a small culture, the government is much more uh, in touch with the needs of the people. And so businesses, and when you're starting your startup, you can actually get direct audience with the regulators and the business officials that you need. Yeah. And they're very open to hear your ideas and they're very pragmatic about it to discuss the pros and cons of them as well. Yeah. And I think that's the type of, you know, that's 
an access to authority that you would never have in America. And that kind of collaboration is something that's really unique because you can tap into some broader initiatives that wouldn't be possible beforehand. Yeah, the ministry of, uh, or the, the um, prime minister of the Netherlands rides his bike to work, <laughs> yeah. whereas our president or any other president has Spends a like huge million dollars. motorcade yeah. and like <laughs> eight, eight helicopters following. Um, and like you can literally call, there's like one degree of separation between you and everyone else actually in yeah. the Netherlands. It's just like a huge networking opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's super manageable, super digestible for entrepreneurs to come here. Uh, what, what is it like, what is your experience in doing business here um, compared mm. to doing business in the US? Because you had an NGO in the US, yeah. but you have Nest Egg here in the Netherlands. Yeah. What's the difference for you? So I would say the difference for us is that since we're doing stuff with infrastructure and like solar panels and the energy transition, I mean, there's definitely money in this stuff, but it's, uh, it's an initiative that's a little more long term. Yeah. And so it's a lot better here in the Netherlands where when I explain the idea, people understand the, uh, the impact on society and they take that into account when they're evaluating whether your idea is worth it or not. Whereas when I actually went to America and talked at conferences and stuff, the first reaction I always got, number one, was how do you make money with that? Yeah. And it's and it's funny because it's like the business model is there. That's not the issue, but the impact that you're creating is actually the goal. Yeah. yeah. And in Europe, it's a no-brainer. No one even questions that. But in America, yeah. there's always that level of like, yeah, 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 cool, nice, inspiring idea. Yeah. But like, how are you going to make a lot, a lot of money off of that? And that yeah. kind of, that kind of priority kind of distorts what you want to achieve, and it also affects what kind of partners and collaborators you bring to the table. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, another, another, you were saying earlier before the before we started rolling. What is it like? What's the difference between the, the Belastingsdienst, which is the Dutch tax authority, and the IRS? Because I think a lot of people are wondering about that. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, uh, so I mean, what's pretty cool with the Netherlands is they actually do your taxes for you, right? They give yeah. you a little postcard with everything filled out, and they're like, is this all good? If not, let us know. Yeah. But uh, it's so <laughs> much more convenient than the month of stressing of looking through all your receipts and trying yeah. to make sure you didn't fuck up. Yeah. So uh, in that sense, they really the user experience of taxes here is a lot better, and there's a yeah. lot less fear. Yeah, uh, definitely. When I describe the fear story, of the IRS if I mess something up the Dutch people just look at me so quizzically like yeah. you're scared of your tax agency yeah. hey what are you paying health insurance per month oh uh, 80 bucks a month yeah I pay I pay 120 for teeth euros phys- sorry. yeah <laughs> so 120 euros for teeth phys- physio and I, I had an operation four months ago that cost oh. me like 10 euros oh my god where they removed a titanium rod this long from my <laughs> leg and I had to spend three days in the hospital and it cost 10 euros? Yeah, the bill Holy at the end was 10 euros. Moly. Also, wow. ev- every, uh, anytime I have any tooth work done, it's, it's like 10 bucks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, free. It's amazing. When I first moved here, I just went on a website and it was like, get your health insurance. I filled in my information and I got a card in the mail three days yeah. later. Yeah. I went hiking with my friends in America and it was so funny because uh, one of my friends, he's a, a fil- he, he makes films and stuff and he has this really expensive camera and gimbal and we're going in the mountain and we're climbing around and I was like, wow, Dan, like, uh, aren't you scared? Because like, are you in- do you have any of this insured? Yeah. He was like, my camera's not insured, my gimbal's not insured, <laughs> my health's not insured. If I lose one thing, I'm fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The entire, entire life so the, and that goes I guess also into what you're saying with the, with the poverty and like the wealth inequality here in the Netherlands yeah. they don't have that there's no poor yeah. people there's yeah. no homeless people yeah. so there's no kind of perception of uh, of, of uh, survival mode Every, like everything is pretty much good so you're able to work on your goals without yeah. worrying about falling through the cracks yeah exactly and that's that's sort of like the, the metaphor I always use is that in the US we've got a, a chain a hierarchical chain uh, representing sort of the different strata of, of mm-hmm. society and once in a while when it rains one chain falls off mm. and is irrecoverable whereas like it's it's more of a holistic chain that's right. connected like this and once in a while when it rains somebody comes by and sprays WD-40 right. on the links at the bottom. Right, they take a little bit of money yeah. from the top chains to spray that WD-40, yeah. keep it long and, and yeah. sturdy. Yeah. yeah, and and like quality of life sort of rankings aside, I think, uh, yeah, for me it, it, it's really a lot easier to work amongst people mm-hmm. who are not constantly fear driven yeah um than it is in a society where it's like where am i going to get my next meal and how the hell do i pay for health insurance right and then and w- what's funny is when i first moved here i thought that attitude would, would like would uh the consequence of that would be less innovation people would be more chill or people wouldn't be active but it's the opposite people are very excited here yeah. when they're working on their things and they feel almost no they're, they're, there's no risk for them to go for the big ideas and so that's something that I was super surprised by because I thought if you're going to be out there and do cool things, you have to be under that like threat of not being able to pay stress. for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was really nice and relieving to see that you can have both. Uh, it's almost like you have best of both worlds. You can yeah. be both innovative and still keep your uh, your basic needs taken care yeah, of. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anything else you're working on these days that we should know about? Oh, that's funny you ask. So yeah, we have this uh, this weekend project basically. It was started as a joke, and it's kind of uh, snowballed. Um, this idea called Moonshot Express. 
and basically we're getting uh, people who are enthusiastic about Bitcoin and uh, space travel, and we're getting a rocket to launch a Bitcoin wallet to the moon. So, so, so you're sending Bitcoin to the moon, Yeah. dot, 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 literally. Literally. Exclamation point. <laughs> and awesome. the idea is if we can put a global treasure chest on the moon that the entire world can send money to, it's a matter of time until someone says, hey, it's worth it for me to go up there and get it. Yeah. yeah. So it's a way we can actually, as a whole world, incentivize space travel. Or awesome. at least that's the idea. You might have to skip a couple planets like further, though. Right. I think yeah. the Chinese are about to, to jump that hurdle. <laughs> but um, so, guys, thank you for joining us today. Um, as usual, we've gone over our five minute time limit. But if you have any more questions, feel free to uh, email me at christopher.sparks at brightlands.com for any more inf information on the hive how if you're American, you can think about uh, coming to the Netherlands and joining our incubation and acceleration programs um, and sort of what it means to be uh, truly innovative in a place that is even more innovative than um, one would expect. Yeah. yeah, come on, Patriots, come on through. Come party on. over here. Come on. <laughs> Cheers.